What I want to do in this video is show you how to use QGIS to import data uh, into PostGIS. Uh, first thing I'll do is uh, save the project. So I'm going to save it over to my Z drive. So Z var GIST 7132. And I'm going to go to my mod 5 data. Now there is an assumption that you've already copied the data over uh, from the J drive. So I'm just going to put this M05 in there. So if you've already copied the data from J to your Z drive, then this technique will work. One thing that's shown up here is this project home. So this is the directory that my project file is in, my QGIS project file. And I copied over some data earlier in the lab. And there's this spec pass shape file. So I'm going to double click on that. And it should add it to the view. I'll just go OK to the transformation. And that looks good. Okay. Uh, whenever you get the opportunity, always check your data. So this visually looks good. That's a good check. I'm going to go open up the uh, attribute table and take a look as well. Popped off off screen. I'll bring it over. So I have these columns. What am I hunting for right now? A column I could use as the primary key. So Beck pass underscore and Beck pass ID look look good it's about 575 rows in this data set okay so this looks good in that so we will go with that back pass id if i'm asked anything about a primary key so what i'm looking at right now is a shape file the idea is i want to get it over into postgis so i'm going to make a new postgis connection here So I'm going to right click on, uh, sorry, post just there, uh, new connection. And so I'm going to call this demo M05. Uh, the server is gamma.athena.bcit.ca. Oh, forgot an A. Athena. Uh, database will be your uh, student database that you're given at the beginning of the course. Remember, lowercase. In this case, my demo database is also called demo. I'm going to uh, authenticate using that username. So yours, yours will be your uh, student username. And I will. Now I have enough information here to test. I'm going to go test. This looks good. OK, so I'm happy with that. One thing I like to do is actually uh, show me everything in the database. So don't hide tables that actually don't have spatial geometry. Show me them uh, all in case I need to do a join in that an attribute join so this looks good i'm going to go okay and i'll go okay to that message too and this is the database connection here and i can see that mod 5 uh, schema that i made earlier now there's no spatial data in it right now you might have some tables depending on what you've done uh, what exercises you've done in the lab so far so don't be shocked if you have more stuff than me right now so what i want to do is I'm looking at the shape file, but I want to get it in this database. So how do I do that? Well, there's a nice tool called the Database Manager up here that can help you out. So it keeps track of all the connections you have to different types of databases, Oracle, GeoPackages, SpatialLite, PostGIS. And so PostGIS is the one that we're dealing with. It can see my uh, Mod 5 demo connection, and I can see my schemas. And I like to click on the schema. Uh, I call it getting your feet right. So I like to, you know, this is the schema I want to get the data into. And then you just use this import layer tool. Now, this top part shows you all the layers you have listed over here in layers. So basically, if I drop this down, it just has back pass in it because there's only one layer loaded right now. The schema is, is by default uh, mod 5. Why? Because I had it select over here. Easy enough to change. Just drop the list down if you want to change it. The table name, you can change the table name. I'm fine with Beck Pass. The primary key I do want to change. I want to say, hey, use that Beck Pass underscore ID in that. Uh, I'm not worried about geometry column. It'll call it geom, which I'm fine with. Uh, there, it did detect that the data was in uh, Mel Bell Bears. And so that's uh, 3005. And if I don't do anything, it's going to leave it in 3005 in the database. And I'm actually okay with that. That's exactly actually what I want. So that's good. But you could project on the fly if you wanted to. Now, there's a nice convenience option here is to, hey, any field names 
uh, convert any field names to lowercase. If you go back and check, when we opened up the attribute table, you might notice that all of the column names were in uppercase, and that's pretty standard with a shape file. And actually, I want that want them to be low, uh, in lowercase when they go over to the database. That actually helps me out later on when I'm querying. I also want to create a spatial index for, for performance reasons, so, it's, so, so that's fast. And all I can do is now go OK. And it'll spin for a few seconds, not minutes. Uh, it'll get over there. And it's converting all the data that I had here in the shape file. It's actually gone and put it over my database. And so I can see that something's showing up here. So I'm going to turn this layer off and then double click this one into the view, right? And so can you see a difference is the question, right? So that was the original shape file. That's what that layer is pointing at. And this is the one out of the database. Is there any way I can prove that? That's a good question, right? So I'm actually just going to go open attribute table. Notice that all the column names are now in lowercase, like I asked it to be. If I go back to the original shape file, open attribute table, we'll see that they're all in uppercase if you check them out in that. So this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty confident. Uh, now that I got the data loaded in the database, I don't need the shape file version anymore. You can also go property source is another thing you can do. You can go source and you can actually check um, where is it pointing to on disk and that sort of thing. So you might find out more information about where it's located if you uh, dig through the dialogue here and that. So I'm just going to leave that there. And so this one here in orange, I'm going to remove the purple one. Remove this layer. Okay. And this is the one that is from the database and that. Okay, so you can actually see that it's coming from when I with the tooltip that it's coming from Gamma and that my demo thing, uh, uh, who the primary key is, what the SRID is, and the basic geometry type, and the table name, schema name dot table name. So there's lots of information there on the tooltip and that. Okay, so all looks good. And the database name. Lots of information there when you hover over the layer, which is great things. Like, which one am I looking at? So the data got successfully uh, su over there successfully. It looks really good. It doesn't look like there's any missing polygons. All the columns seem to be there. They're in lowercase. So I'm kind of happy. So this is a, a way you can use QGIS to get data into the database uh, quickly. You had to accept some of the defaults. We didn't have a lot of control over data types as it went over, but it usually gets over there pretty well in a shape that will, will work for us. That's all for now.